Welcome to Hustle and Flow with Heather Hubbard, episode 163. Hi, I'm Heather Hubbard, and I was a litigator partner and practice group leader at an AMLAW 200 firm. I know what it takes to rise to the top. I also know all too well the toll it can take on your personal life. So how do you shine bright without burning out? How do you embrace your ambition without selling your soul? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow podcast. Welcome back. I am your host, Heather Hubbard. I hope you are having a fabulous week. Today, we are talking about content creation strategies. So what do I mean by content creation? Well, first and foremost, content creation is anything from social media to articles to blogs, podcasts, videos, speaking, materials that you might hand out. All of this is content creation. And you might be wondering, well, how does that relate to me? And some of you may totally get it. Others may be like, is this a podcast I'm interested in listening to? Here's who needs to be creating content. Anyone who wants to get more clients or anyone who wants to be seen as a leader or an expert in any area or Anyone who wants to become known as a thought leader, a mover, a shaker, or just having general credibility within your industry and your market. So basically, everyone, all of you need to be thinking about creating content because it allows others to see you for who you are and what you do and what you have to offer. So even if you are not trying to generate business in any form or fashion, maybe you are, you know, you're just an employee. And when I say just an employee, I'm not saying that that's less than I'm just saying like, you don't actually have to go out and hustle to, you know, put food on the table. So you are climbing the corporate ladder. And you might be thinking, you know, I'm in the nonprofit world, or I'm in corporate. So why do I need to be creating content? Because it still matters. It still matters in the sense that not just within your own company, it allows you to position yourself to be seen as a contributor and a leader, but in your community, your community, this is super important. And this can be a local community, a regional community. It can be a national or even global community. The question becomes, where do you want to have opportunities? Where do you want to build a network? And that's different for every person. It's not one size fits all. So that's the first thing that you have to do is you just have to say, who am I speaking to? It could be clients, prospective clients, colleagues, your boss, referral sources, potential future employers. Maybe there is a nonprofit board or a membership organization where you eventually want a leadership position. You may be creating content for the people who will be selecting you or voting for you at some point in the future. So you just want to get clear on who am I speaking to? Who is my audience? And then the second piece is, and it's it's related, is figuring out well, what do you want them to do with that information? Why are you communicating in the first place, right? So you know who you're speaking to, and then it's why. Why are you speaking to them? What are you hoping to get out of that communication? So if it's a client or a prospective client, it may be just to stay top of mind. It may be to let them know what you do, your area of expertise, how you can help. If it is your supervisor or your colleagues, it may be about informing them again of your expertise, of your opinions on certain matters so that they see you in a certain light, maybe as a leader. If you are speaking to a potential future board, right, whether it's a community organization or a membership organization, maybe it's speaking about things that they care about so that when you go to apply or they do some research, they see that you're not just pitching something for the very first time. They see that you very much care about that organization and about that community. So once you know who you're speaking to, 
and why you're speaking to them, what you want out of it. Then you can start to look at the different avenues in which you can actually speak to them. And there's so many different avenues to do that. The sky really is the limit. There are new things each and every day. And so I'm going to give you some ideas. But this is just a starting point. I guarantee you there are things out there that I'm not even thinking about. So you have social media, and that includes Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn. You have YouTube. You have your own website where you can host material. And that's whether that's a blog or not. Your website is a way to communicate and get information out in the world. It might be your own hosted blog Or you might be on something else like Tumblr or Blogger. It could be articles in publications where you are a regular contributor, such as Medium or the Huffington Post. It could be doing an article that is a one-off. So you submit it to a journal, a magazine, a publication, and they publish it that one time. It could be a feature or where you are quoted or highlighted in a piece. So someone else who writes regularly, they do the writing, but you are included in it. That is a way to get information in there. It could be a podcast, just like this one. It could be a PDF. It could be snail mail. It could be a pamphlet or a workbook a postcard, something that you hand out at a presentation. Maybe you're doing speaking, which means PowerPoints, Keynote, Google Slides. Those can be a form of communication as well, both up on the screen, as well as if you turn them into handouts. It might be a newsletter list, an email. And so that could be automated newsletter lists where you have a provider that sends those out where people can actually opt in and subscribe and unsubscribe. Or it could be a one off email. Maybe you're emailing a group and you're CCing them or BCCing them, or maybe it just is an individual email, but maybe you send it to multiple people. All of those count as content creation documentaries count, uh, videos, courses, where, you know, someone can watch a video and take a test, anything like that, a webinar, a seminar, the sky is the limit and how you can actually get the word out there. So when it comes to, well, what is the right avenue for you? My first advice is simply to pick a few things. There can be a tendency to want to do all the things, especially when Depending on, you know, how much you follow or you're into listening to people who are giving you advice around marketing or getting clients, you can see all of these wonderful gurus out there saying this worked for me and do this and you got to do this. And so you start thinking, oh, I got to do all the things. And it's really hard to do all the things really well. If you've been listening to this podcast for any length of time, you know that I'm constantly preaching you have to focus, 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 focus. So depending on your resources, and what I mean by that is how much time do you have? How big is your team where others can help you? And how much money do you have? All of that's going to determine whether you should be doing just one, a few, or you can do all of them, right? So just pick a few to focus on at first. And then once they're going, you can do more. I will go ahead and tell you I do more than I actually have time for and can handle, which means... I'm not doing any of them as well as I could if I gave it all of my time and my attention. My main, my main avenue for content creation is this podcast. So if you follow me on social media or even you get my newsletter or other things, I mean, hopefully you think I provide good, valuable content on all of those channels, but this probably is the one that you would say is the most valuable. And the reason why is because this is my primary focus. I have chosen one avenue that I give my primary attention to, and that is this podcast. We try to provide a ton of great content and value for you here. And we still do other stuff as well, but none of it is as well. Hopefully that makes sense, but we're going to work on that. So 
that's what you want to do. You want to say, well, how many places can I focus? And when you're making that decision, part of it depends on your personality, your strengths, your interests, what you want to learn. And part of it should depend on your audience. This goes back to the first piece. So depending on who you're talking to, that really should impact what you're choosing. So if if you're wanting to do a podcast and your primary listener, your primary audience is someone in their 80s, that may not be the best choice. Because if you do any research, you're going to find out that you, there's not a lot of 80 year olds listening to podcasts. Doesn't mean there aren't any, but that's probably not the best way to get in front of them. Similarly, you know, if you're trying to reach teenagers or 20 year olds, podcasts may not be the best answer either. Now, again, of course, there are exceptions to every rule, but if you look at the data, you're mostly looking at 30, 40 year olds listening to podcasts. 50 year olds are starting to listen as well. YouTube is still very much a younger person's game. You just really can look at what people are doing and look in your niche, look in your market. If there's already great newsletters out there, journals out there where you can contribute, that's a pretty easy win for you. So getting in front of people in the way that they are already consuming content is the smartest way to go about it. So some people will tell you, you absolutely have to have an email list, right? You absolutely have to have a blog. You absolutely have to be doing Facebook Lives. There are people that have all kinds of rules. You absolutely do not have to be doing any of the things. It really does depend on your personality, what you have a desire to do, and where your people are already hanging out. Okay? There is no right or wrong to this, but you do want to be intentional and think about it. So for those that, you know, are 100% corporate, and you are wanting to impress maybe others within your company, it could be an internal company newsletter, or it could be something that is already going on. Maybe your company already has a blog. And if you were writing for it and you are a regular contributor, you would be able to be highlighted. If you're wanting to get in front of others or just be seen in your community, then maybe that's on LinkedIn. Maybe it is membership organizations where you are speaking there or writing for their newsletter. But you really just want to think that through because not I know they say, you know, all publicity is good publicity. Here's the thing. There is so much noise out there. So much noise, that it's really hard to actually get things seen. So and forget the algorithms, even with social media, right? Like even emails, the percentage of people who will actually open your emails, if there's a newsletter list, it's insane. Like it is insanely low. If you you know, if you've got even a 40% open rate, like that is amazing. And the smaller your list, the higher the open rate will be the more people you add to your list, it gets smaller and smaller. And the click through rate is even crazier, right? Like it might only be like one to 2%. So Just know that there's a ton out there. And so just because you put it out there doesn't mean that anyone's actually going to see it, hear it, read it. So if you've got a blog and you're posting and no one's seeing, that doesn't really help you unless you simply want to be able to say at parties, oh, I have a blog, right? And that somehow like helps you or when you're being, you know, presented before a speaking presentation and you can say, oh, I have this blog. If that's all that you need, then that's fine. But if what you're wanting is for someone to actually consume your content, then you need to get it in a place where people can actually see it. And so part of what that means is you need to consider what you're actually putting out there. That's the next step. So if you know who you're speaking to, why you're speaking to them, and the avenue or the channel, the platform in which you want to communicate, then number four really is, well, what do you want to communicate? And oftentimes that is, well, what is your audience interested in hearing? What is something that resonates with them in a way that it positions you as the authority or as a leader. So, right, you got to go back to number two, which is your why, because you really want it needs to serve your audience, but it needs to serve you as well. And so this is where you want to get strategic. Similar to what I was saying before, like you don't want to be on every single channel, every single platform, because people may not be listening to you, especially if you're not targeting it in the right way. Well, the other piece to that is 
So let's say, you know, I have a lot of lawyers who listen. Let's say you are a young associate and you are happy to get something published in anything and everything. So you did a blog entry on something related to employment law, and then you get an article published related to, you know, e-discovery. And then you do a presentation on being a good associate, right? Like, so you're speaking on all kinds of different topics in many different ways. It might get you experience in writing and speaking, but it's not going to actually build your case of being an expert or build your case of being known for a certain thing. This kind of relates to the concept of the riches in the niche. And that's not just for if you own a business, if you are, you know, an employee, or again, if you're trying to be a leader in a certain area, that niche can be a market industry, that niche can be a community, it can be an area of expertise. But the more you're known for a certain thing, the more people are going to think of you for that thing, right? So you really do want to be strategic about what you are actually putting out there. Don't publish or create just for the sake of publishing or creating because you are not going to have the impact that you want. Now, if you own a business or you work for a company or a firm where you are supposed to be bringing in business, then the best way to think about the content you should be producing is to think about what you're selling, right? What do you want people to do at the very end of the day? The long-term view, if someone is, you know, consuming your content after a certain amount of time, what do you want them to do? Right. And that's generally to hire you, to refer you, to send you more work. And so then you want to think about, well, what am I selling them? And this may sound really simple, <laughs> but you'd be shocked how many people put content out there that's not actually related to what they're doing and selling. And there can be a reason why we'll talk about that in a minute, but be intentional and be strategic. So you're thinking about, OK, well, what am I selling? And then you say, well, what might they need to know about that in order to hire me. So a lot of it can be educational. A lot of it can be educational. A lot of it can be showing your expertise. So if you say to someone, oh, I help people with their marketing, but you never actually share any marketing advice, then they may not know if you're any good. They may not know if you're any good. And that in and of itself can be a content creation strategy is related to testimonials and case studies, but that's not what this particular episode is about. A note on that, though, oftentimes there can be a fear that if you put too much information out there or give people, you know, too many tips that there's no reason for them to hire you. And I have found the opposite to be true. I think that the more you share the more tips you give throughout, the more people see you as someone who knows what they're talking about because they can go try some of that stuff out or they can actually go test it. So even if it's, you know, you're giving them advice, right? So let's go back to the employment lawyer example. If you just give tips related to employment and they actually use it and it worked out or they have a conversation with, you know, maybe someone in their HR and they validate what you're saying, they're like, oh, that person knows what they're talking about, right? So if you want to go ahead and give people instructions on what they should include in a policy or a procedure, you're not giving away the goods because for the most part, people still need the context and they don't actually want to put it together themselves. If they truly want to save that much money, they were never going to hire you in the first place. But for those who do want to hire you, going ahead and giving free value shows them that you know what you're talking about. And if they can go ahead and implement it and start to see results, then they will see, oh, if I actually work with that person, they can help me even more. I remember I was working with a mastermind client a few years ago within a law firm. And he said, Heather, oftentimes the stuff that you say in your podcast, like it's just as good as the mastermind. He was like, you give away way too much in your podcast. And I'm like, well, here's my thing. Some people are never going to hire me or someone else, right? For many different reasons. It could be that they can't afford it, although it's more often that they just have blocks, excuses, you know, all these things. And that's okay, right? So 
it's not my job to actually convince them that they should be hiring someone. If I can give them some tips and they actually get results, that's great. I mean, here's the thing. like I know they're never going to get the same results as if they were hiring someone to actually help them. And so I'm okay with that. If they get small wins, isn't that better than them getting nothing? I mean, I do feel like you have to truly show up in a way where you're willing to let others learn from you. I mean, it's the same concept as mentoring. And it's one of the reasons why I don't do, you know, I think I've shared on here before. I'm not going to just jump on the phone with people. I don't do coffees. Even when you're friends, I don't let you pick my brain, partly because I feel like I'm letting people pick my brain constantly on the podcast. Like I'm giving y'all really good stuff. I'm giving you my best stuff. If you then want me to personally look at your stuff, you have to hire me. (laughs) You don't get to continue to pick my brain for free. And so that's how you can look at it when you are creating your content. How can I provide value? How do I not worry about like, am I giving away good stuff? Like give away good stuff, tell people how to do it. And that is you being of service. That is you giving back. That is you mentoring. And then for those who need and want you to provide even more, they can hire you. And that's where you do have to have good boundaries. Don't continue to provide stuff for free. You are in business. You have to charge and just know not everyone's going to, they're not all going to hire you. And that's okay. You're not looking for a 100% conversion rate. I don't know about you, but like, I don't want to convince people that they should want to work with me. To me, like if they want to, they will. And those are the best relationships. So just give freely when you're doing your content, give freely. Don't be afraid to have an opinion. I know oftentimes we get very concerned of like, I have to be really careful with what I say, because if I do this on social media wrong, or if I do this wrong, people won't like me or they're going to talk about me. Or what if I offend these clients or annoy these clients? Well, when you're trying to please everyone, I can promise you, I mean, you'll still please some, but if you're constantly worried about offending people, the truth is you're probably not memorable. And I know that sounds bad, but the more authentic you can be, the better, because especially if this is from a client perspective, an employee perspective, even a board perspective. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, every single time you would be creating content and communicating it, it's because you're trying to create some type of relationship, right? Where you're wanting to work with someone now or in the future. And if that person is going to be offended by what you would say and mean on social media or a podcast or something else, I promise you there's probably going to be a time in that relationship, that working relationship where you guys are going to be oil and water and they're going to be offended because unless you're never going to show up as yourself, they're going to be unhappy. And why not figure that out on the front end than the back end? So being brave enough to really be yourself and to have an opinion, and to have a strong opinion is even better. Because when you create some of that tension or that conflict, or you have a strong position, you will truly attract the people who are most interested. And you will repel those who just don't like you. And not everyone's going to like you. I mean, that's I still struggle with that. I want everyone to like me. But that's just not possible. And so the more that I am myself, the more that I just am straight up and direct and share my opinions, the people who really like that, even if they don't agree with everything I say, they're attracted to it. And those who don't, like they're never going to listen again. And that's okay because there's someone else out there who can help them that's going to be a better fit anyway. So don't be afraid to have a strong opinion. I'm sure you have read articles or seen posts on social media where it's just, I mean, watered down. And it's like, eh. this goes back to there being a lot of noise. There is so much noise out there. Think of the amount of social posts a day. Think of the number of podcasts, the number of emails, articles, presentations going on in any given day. If it's bland, no one's going to pay attention. It is going to be forgettable. I mean, think of your own, right? Scrolling. Do you do you just like the watered down bland stuff? One, two, three. Or do you like a story? Do you like something that's a little bit more conversational or thought provoking or really takes a stand? My guess is there are certain people that you listen to and follow because they take a strong stand on things and you're like, yes, I agree. 
right? We all want that community. So that's where you can probably think of examples of, yeah, I I don't read through that. There's tons of articles out there, right? Like that blogs out there. It's like, yeah, we've already heard this next. So you don't want to be the next. Don't be the next. You want people to actually consume it. So you need to be providing great content. Maybe it's educational. Maybe it's tips. It's something that they can go use on their own without you. And it's you. Like it's really you coming through. It's super authentic. And it's something that someone would actually be interested in reading. And then my last tip is just to be open, to test, to be curious, to play. Know that there is no formula. There is no right or wrong way to do something. And if a guru tells you otherwise, they're just trying to sell their own thing. (laughs) So the key really is to figure out what's going to work for you. And if you hear crickets, don't think that that means people aren't interested. It could be, right? Like that's data to consider. But it could also be that they're just not the kind of audience that engages. I mean, think about yourself. Like, do you like every single thing that you see? Do you comment on every single thing? But does that mean you're annoyed by it or you don't care? Right? So just think about your own perspective and how you engage and know that that's what's going on in the world as well. And if you see things that you do engage with or that you find super valuable, that can also inform you as to what you might want to consider doing. But do follow metrics. Look at your open rates. Look at your likes. Don't do it all the time, though. So I track all of my stuff. We track it on a weekly and monthly basis. And if you start tracking too much more than that, like it gets too granular and you're not seeing the big picture. But you really can use it as a way to test. So I thought I would go ahead and share with you guys a little bit. I have a ton of content. When I consider the number of podcasts I have done, over 160, all of the webinars I have done, presentations, all of my workshops, what I teach in my programs... I have so much content. And so what I am now looking at is really how do I leverage and repurpose that content? Because once you get going and you put a ton out there, you don't have to keep creating from scratch. You can repurpose, retool. And so I love to test. I love to play. And so one of the things that I am going to be doing for the next three months is playing around with concepts related to not just repurposing content, but strategically playing with some of my social media accounts, specifically Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So I've had those channels for a really long time, and we've tracked data for a really long time. We have a ton of content. And so for the next three months, I actually am going to play with a concept on getting that content out there and then seeing how different audiences respond, because I have some theories and I want to test them out. So here's what I'm doing. Feel free to try to crack the code and follow along if you want to, if you get into these kinds of things. My Instagram and Facebook are both at Heather Joy Hubbard and LinkedIn is is as well, but I get their handles look a little bit different, but it is Heather Joy Hubbard on LinkedIn. So if you want to follow all three of those accounts to try to hack what I'm doing, feel free, because here's what I'm going to do. I've got a strategy that I'm going to use in May a strategy that I'm going to use in June and a strategy that I'm going to use in July. And then on episode 176, which is going to come out August 11th, I'm going to share with you all of the results. I'm going to tell you exactly what I did and what worked and what didn't work, because that really is what I want you guys to hear. It really is all an experiment. It is all testing. So as long as you know who you're speaking to, why you're speaking to them, and you've got some intentionality around the platform and the content itself, at that point, it is just testing and playing and knowing that there is no formula. You can't get it perfect just do your best and have fun. So feel free to follow along with this. We'll do a recap in August. I'll let you know what I did and how it went. And then also my masterminders are killing it with content creation right now. They have so much good stuff out there. So what we've done is we've actually pulled it together. I asked them if they wanted to share some stuff with me that they've been doing over the last few weeks. I think a lot of people with where we've been with COVID, you know, there's just more going on in the world right now where people have extra time. And so they're working on business development and just social media, that kind of thing in their presence. Although 
they've been doing it before then too. So what we've done is we have pulled that together as an example so that you can look at it for a few different reasons. One, you may look at it just to get you some ideas as to what content creation might look like, whether or not it is on a regular schedule or it is a one-off in different industries, different kinds of professionals, different kinds of corporate backgrounds, the ways in which people use it. So it's just interesting to look and see. And the people in my mastermind, are amazing. So you may find that there are some people doing things where you want to follow them because they have great content and it's super valuable. So if you want to check that out, all you have to do is head on over to our website related to the podcast. So that will be hustleandflowpodcast.com forward slash 100 and 63. And it will be all right there for you to check out. Okay, that is it for today. Go create some valuable content and let me know how it goes. All right, see you next week. For show notes, downloads and other free resources, and to keep the conversation going, head on over to hustleandflowpodcast.com. See you there.